The last case I had before I retired uh, sticks in my mind the most because of the uh, contradictions that came up in that case. Uh, this young man had killed a police officer who was charged uh, under our aggravated murder statute and actually uh, uh, was having a fetal alcohol evaluation done, which uh, seemed to indicate pretty strongly that uh, this young man did have fetal alcohol. Uh, at the very time that the prosecutor agreed to remove the death penalty from the table and the defendant agreed to plead guilty and to be sentenced to uh, life in, in prison without uh, the possibility of parole. Unfortunately, we never did get the benefit of the formal FASD evaluation, but just on my prior experiences, uh, he didn't exhibit the type of uh, behavioral deficits that I was used to seeing in other FASD cases. Uh, uh, you know, he seemed to handle the courtroom pretty well. Uh, he was able to, seemed to be able to concentrate long enough to get through most of our hearings without our having to take extra recesses, and that was highly unusual. So in some cases, the uh, uh, deficits are such that the individual with FASD is able to do a pretty good job of hiding them from the public view. Well, the first case that I ever had, on the other hand, uh, the first thing I was told by counsel was, uh, Your Honor, we're going to have to take extra recesses because this young man's attention span is very short. Uh, he doesn't focus for any length of time. He can't handle large crowds and, and he can't handle noise. So we have to take breaks to get, let him be debriefed and, and to give him a chance to refocus. You have to keep an open mind. You can't view a person with FASD the same as you might view somebody with a different intellectual disability because we're talking about a disability which is uh, caused by brain damage versus disabilities that are caused by genetics or some other factor that you can't visualize. And to me it's most significant when we're dealing with the question of whether a person with FASD who's before the court is competent to stand trial, competent to waive uh, rights to remain silent, competent to give uh, in, uh, you know, informed consent to a search request by the authorities. Because the standard approach to determining competency that we've used for years and years and years with people who have mental retardation or people who are mentally ill just don't fit very well when we're trying to evaluate uh, the company as someone that suffers a permanent brain damage.